Hi, I'm Robert McNish. I'm an Applications Engineer at Ublox. Today, I'm going to go over the firmware update process for Ublox GNSS receivers. Any receiver with flash can be updated through this process. I'm going to go over the differences between updating over UART and USB and demonstrate the update on a few different generations of receiver. Since we've been talking a lot about the C99F9P application board, for my first example, I'm going to update the ZF9P module on this board. Let's get started. So I hope that you've watched the earlier videos introducing the C99F9P board, but as a quick review, it has a single USB connection providing access to both the UART and the USB interfaces of the ZF9P module. After connecting to my PC, I have the UART on COM5 and the native USB connection on COM8. The first step to any update is to download the latest firmware for your receiver. You can find this on the Ublox website under the product page for your receiver, under documentation and resources, in the firmware updates section. You can also find it from the product resources page available under the support tab where you can filter by product category, file category, and the specific product that you're using. The main software tool for performing these updates is uCenter, which can also be downloaded from the uBlox website. It's under Support, Evaluation Software, uCenter. After opening uCenter, first select the appropriate COM port. I'm going to start with an update over UART which for me is COM5. Down at the bottom of the window, the port icon will blink green if uCenter is successfully communicating with the receiver. Go to Tools, Firmware Update to launch the Firmware Update utility. There are a few selections in this menu to make before starting the update. First, select the firmware file that you're going to load. Be sure to select the correct image for the receiver you are updating. For an update over UART, I recommend checking the Enter Safe Boot Before Update box. This commands a receiver into a bootloader mode before beginning the update. Anytime this box is checked, also check the Send Training Sequence box. This sends a pattern of ones and zeros after entering safe boot mode to synchronize the baud rate. Finally, select the baud rate to use for the update. I'm going to select 921600, which is the highest baud rate supported by ZF9P. These settings can be used for UART updates with all generations of receivers. Once these selections are made, it's time to begin the update by clicking the green Go button in the bottom left-hand corner. Information on the update activity is shown in the console in the bottom left and there's a visualization of the flash blocks being erased and written on the right. uCenter also comes with a command line update utility, and the command that is being used for the current update is shown here. Once the update completes, the new firmware image is checked, and if all went well, it reports a success. Now let's do another update, this time over the native USB interface. For me, this is COM8. So I first change the COM port selection in uCenter. Note that when uCenter is connected to a native USB interface, the USB alternative update box is available to be checked. But leave this box unchecked when updating F9 and M9 generation receivers. Also with these receivers, you can leave all the other boxes unchecked. 
Now I'm ready to perform the update over USB. For the next example, I'm going to update a Neo M9N module inside the EVK M91. The USB connection on this kit goes straight to the USB interface of the Neo M9N module. The UART is directly accessible on the 14 pin test connector or over RS-232 via the DB9 connector. Since the UART and USB update settings for Neo M9N are exactly the same as I've just shown for ZF9P, this time I'll demonstrate a USB update using the command line tool. I'll use uCenter as a quick way to generate the command. Since I'm updating over USB, I'll leave all the boxes unchecked and just change the firmware image that's going to be loaded. Copy the command, then open a command prompt in the same directory as the uCenter program. And paste the command into the command line. There's one thing that needs to be changed before starting the update, and this is the port. Change standard I.O to forward slash forward slash dot forward slash followed by the COM port name. I'm using COM14. Then hit enter to begin the update. Just like when using uCenter, the new firmware image is checked at the completion of the update and a success is reported. Now for the final example, I'm going to update a Neo M8N module in the EVK M8N. Just like the EVK M91, the USB connection on this kit goes straight to the USB interface of the Neo M8N. Once the kit is connected, I have COM17. For updating uBlocks M8, uBlocks 8, and older generations, I recommend using the legacy firmware update utility. It's also available under the Tools menu. The interface is very similar. First select the firmware file to be loaded. With these receiver generations, a flash information structure file is also needed, and this can be found in the same folder where uCenter is installed. The UART update settings are exactly the same as before, but for USB updates there's one small difference. The USB alternative update method box should be checked. Now we're ready to perform the update.
That's all for today. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or ideas for future videos. See you next time.